All right, so these next three sections that we're gonna talk about are about generating laser engraving art or laser engraving files using MidJourney, which is an artificial intelligence art generating service. Whether you've tried AI art or you don't know about it, I'm gonna try to break it down in the next three resources on how to get started in a very deliberate and specific way that I generate AI art using MidJourney for laser engraving. There's tons of different images you can generate, but specifically, I'm gonna show you my method for generating really cool laser engraving files and SVG files. There is a process to start using MidJourney, and I'm gonna try to break it down as best as I can. The first thing you're gonna wanna do, and I'll list links in the description below, is you're gonna wanna download an app called Discord. Discord is not just a chat server or a place to hang out, it also is a place where services live at and how you operate them. So you've gotta do this step by step to start using MidJourney. So download the Discord app. Then once you're in the Discord app, which is right here, and install that, you're gonna wanna join the MidJourney server. Once you've joined the MidJourney server, then you need to go over to the MidJourney site and sign up for the type of account you need. It used to be free. Now it's about $10 a month to be able to start generating images. So let's go over to the MidJourney site and we'll take a look over there. All right, so here we are on the MidJourney site, and this is where you're gonna sign up for an account so you can start generating images in the Discord server. So you're just gonna come over here, and if you already have the Discord app open and you're signed into your Discord account, which you just made, when you click sign up, it's gonna say continue with Discord, and it's going to recognize that you're already in Discord, and then it's gonna prompt you with what kind of plan you would like to buy, whether it's the $10 a month plan, which is totally fine for me. I don't use it that much. And then they have other plans where you can generate like thousands and thousands of images. So it's up to you, you know, which plan you wanna get. And once you're signed up for that, should be good to go. When you go back into the Discord app, you'll be able to start generating images. So let's go back over to the Discord app and I'll show you how I do that within Discord. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. We're not going back into the Discord app. I forgot one final resource, which I found very helpful. When you're generating images, you have to give the MidJourney server a prompt within Discord. You have to say, you know, I want you to generate an image of a bear riding a bicycle, holding two fireworks, you know, shooting fireworks out uh, with an American flag on the back of the bicycle or something like that you have to come up with the prompts, but they're very specific prompts. And unless you are seasoned at writing these prompts, you're gonna have a hard time getting the type of image that we're trying to generate specifically for laser engraving. So a way I found around that, that's very affordable, is this site called PromptBase. And there's probably other ones out there like it too. But anyway, at PromptBase, it allows people who are more experienced at writing those prompts to sell their prompts so you can start generating the images and the quality that you need right away. So on PromptBase, it's like a marketplace of people that write prompts. So if you're looking for a specific type of image, you can just say, okay, which AI art service am I using? And you can come over here and I'm using MidJourney. And then these are the type of art that MidJourney is gonna create and the styles that it's gonna create, but you don't have to worry about writing the prompt because they're open-ended prompts that someone else has already tested and taken the time to write. So there's tons and tons of different styles of art you can create, but specifically, I like to create art that's just RGB black and white because I'm gonna be tracing it or laser cutting it or engraving it. I don't want stuff in color. I don't want watercolor pictures. So let me show you some of the prompts that I've purchased that really work well for me. So you can see all the prompt styles that I generate are in black and white or they're line art, or maybe I wanna create some kind of a 3D engraved art. So I've got this art deco relief style that I can generate in mid journey. And then I can use my software to start doing 3D art. This is one that we're gonna use here in a second, the SVG black tattoo file. It doesn't create tattoo files, but it creates this amazing vector art. 
it's not quite a vector. You still got to convert it, but it's like just ripe for turning into a vector for engraving. So now you know about prompt base, go and buy some prompts. They're like two, three dollars. And then you have a list of prompts that work so you can cut right to the chase and start generating in mid journey. And now I promise we're going to go over to the discord app, use mid journey, and I'll show you how to do that. All right, and finally, here we are back over at the Discord app. We signed up for our Mid Journey account. We've got Discord installed. What's interesting about this is once you see the Mid Journey app over here, I have some other apps that I've tried out here. You're going to click on that and you're going to join one of the newcomers' rooms. I'm going to join this room. You got to join a room to be able to generate some art. So, what's interesting about this is you get to see all the art that everyone's generating right now in the server. As you're generating art, you're gonna see new art pop up. People could be generating stuff for their website, for who knows, you're gonna see all kinds of weird stuff and everyone's going to see what you're generating too. Nothing is really hidden here. So if you see someone using a prompt that generated an image style that you like, you can just copy and paste that but change some of the details in their prompt to what you want it to generate. You can download anybody's AI generated art. They can download your art. It's pretty transparent here and they do have restrictions on the type of art that you can generate here. So you're not gonna see any gore or you might see some weird stuff. Mostly I have not seen any nudity on here. So public service announcement, you're gonna see everyone's art in here. Anyway, let's get into it. So over at prompt base, I've got that prompt that I like. So I'm gonna open that up real quick and here's what it looks like. So don't worry about the details of this prompt. It's just really what it's going to generate. So I'm gonna copy the prompt that I bought, right? I'm gonna go back in here and in the chat window as if I'm chatting I'm gonna click forward slash imagine it actually comes up for you you're asking mid journey to imagine what you want so I'm just gonna control V and paste my prompt in and you'll see what I wanted to create is empty so a black and white vector style image of a blank tattoo in the style of cricket SVG cut files white background bold thick filled in Outlook, whatever. This prompt works well for what I wanted to. So let's go ahead and pick something. How about we do exactly what I said in the other video? So a bear riding a bicycle holding two American flags. So let's just, I don't know why I said that, but let's just see what it generates. And that's it. So I changed it right there and then I'm just gonna hit enter. And what you're gonna see is it's gonna say waiting to start because there's a lot of people generating art right now. So it takes a couple of seconds and then it's going to start generating what I asked it to generate. So here we go. You can see it. Look at this. You know, uh, it's it's doing it's doing its best. Now, here's what you do. So this is not an image that I would probably use, but the closest one that I kind of like is maybe this one. So if you like one of these four images, you see these selections right here. You can say, I really like version one, which is here, version two, version three, or version four. You could say, I really like maybe version, I don't know, let's go with two, version two. And when I click that, it's gonna generate four more images based on version two. And you can do this infinitely, and it'll just keep recycling these images, but different variations of it. No, this bear's meaner, right? So this guy, he's, he's angry. Look at this guy. Mr. Mr. Angry American Flag Bicycle Bear. <laughs> All right, let's try something different. So I'm gonna get forward slash imagine. I'm gonna paste in my prompt again since I still have it, except this time I'm gonna do something more realistic. Say you're looking for a wreath or a circle of roses or flowers as part of something that you're making for a customer. Wreath of roses with hearts intertwined. I don't know if I spelled that right and I didn't change any of the other prompt, I just put in something new. So let's see what it generates there. And you notice that it's not putting a lot of color in there and that's important for me. So when I'm vectorizing it later using Adobe Illustrator, I don't have a hard time dealing with all those colors. I don't want colors in the stuff that I'm generating. So these are actually really cool. I kind of like number, I don't know. Do I want, what do I want? I like number four. So let's click version four and see if it generates four more based on version four. I think you're starting to get the idea at this point. 
you want to use high quality prompts. You want to have prompts specific to what your project is doing. And I don't really like any of these either. So you may have to keep recycling until you get the thing that you want. I'm actually going to pick this one because I liked the original one. What I'm going to do now is if you like one, you're going to click U4, which means upscaled number four. And what that's going to do is show you a big image of what it generated right there. So there it is. And I'm just going to click it. It's going to open up and it's not the highest resolution, but don't worry. We're going to use Photoshop and Illustrator to fix that right now. So you just right click on the image save the image to your folder or whatever, and then you're gonna start working with it to turn it into a vector and it takes two seconds and you've got unlimited vector art, unlimited laser engraving files for any kind of project you could ever need and they're yours to use, that you didn't rip them from somebody else, they were generated by AI and you can do whatever you want with them. You could even sell them as an SVG pack on Etsy if you wanted to. So lots of different possibilities here. You just gotta get familiar with how to use Midjourney. So let's go ahead and convert this into a vector real quick, and then we'll get onto some more resources. All right, I've got my file opened up in Photoshop. First thing I'm gonna do, and I'll, I'll list a link up top to a video I've already made on how to do this with any kind of art that you download. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to change the image size. You see it's only 72 DPI. I'm gonna change that to 300. So I'm gonna upscale it. You can see that we just upscaled this image. So it's got higher fidelity at this point. And there is a little bit of gray in there. So I'm just gonna to go to adjustments, threshold. I'm gonna get rid of all that gray, but I wanna keep that detail right there. Yeah, I like that right there. I'm gonna click okay. And then I'm going to export this as a PNG. Then we're gonna open it up over in Illustrator. So let's do that now. All right, so now I've got it opened up in Adobe Illustrator here, and it's a nice 300 DPI, no, no gray in there at all. And I'm just going to click Image Trace, and you can totally do this in Lightburn too. If you got Lightburn, you can totally do exactly what I'm doing using the Lightburn Live Trace. You don't need Adobe Illustrator. So I'm just gonna select the image, hit Image Trace, gonna trace it real quick. I'm going to adjust the trace just a little bit on the threshold so it gets a little bit more of that detail, a little bit more, perfect. And then I'm gonna click expand. I'm gonna ungroup, select a white area. After I ungrouped, select same fill color and delete all the white, highlight everything. Oh, actually, if you look real close, there's some little elements in there that I do not want. So I'm just gonna pick those away. And since it's ungrouped, I can just select them individually. Any kind of loose floaty pieces that Mid Journey created that are useless to me. I'm getting a little picky now. All right, I'm just going to zoom out. I'm going to highlight that all. I'm going to hit Control G and group it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have a clean, ready to be engraved or resized or modified. Whatever it is that they need, I've got a nice wreath of roses. This is just a very small introduction to generating AI art using Midjourney for laser engraving, but I'm excited. Let you know, let me know in the comments below if you've ever used Midjourney before, how you use it, what you think about AI generated art. I love to hear what you have to say about it.